I was recently asked a question about how I create the words and speech bubbles for my webcomic Jim Reel Paranormal Investigator. So I thought I would show you how I make them using this page as an example. Hi it's Dion, I'm an illustrator creating a webcomic about an afro wearing katana wielding demon hunter. You can see me here finishing off some details for page 5 of the webcomic, which you can read right now on my website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Even though I'll always say I'm making a webcomic with traditional art techniques such as paint and pencil, when it comes to speech bubbles, also known as word balloons, I do choose the swanky new computer generated method. And why? Because hand lettering is just not my thing. I'm a messy writer and always making spelling mistakes. So let's get started and I'll take you through the steps I'm using in Adobe Photoshop's 2023 version to make the text and speech bubbles. So with my image open here and I'm going to select the type tool from the menu bar on the left. Then around about here in this area where I've planned to have the first speech bubble of this page, I'll click here with the type tool. This will place some default text called lorem ipsum. Now I've preset the font size, kerning and everything else I want for the text. So as long as it is highlighted, I can go ahead and start typing the dialogue that I've scripted for my character as he's chopping into this bad guy with his en enchanted sword. The only thing I need to change is the text color, which should be black. So I'm going to highlight the text, which then allows me to make any changes I need to it, either in this little menu bar below the text or via the character menu, where I can make really specific changes. For instance, where it says color, I'll select that and change it to black. Let's quickly look over here at the layer window. You can see the layer number two is our text layer that we just created. And if I click somewhere here to finalize the text, the same dialogue will show up, making it easy for us to find it later if we need to make any adjustments. Now let's make the speech bubble to go with our text. First, I want to create a new layer by clicking on this little box with a plus sign in it. That creates a new layer, now called layer two. Then from the tools menu, I'm going to select the brush tool. Before I start using the brush, I'm going to make sure the color is set to white because most of the speech bubbles in this comic are, are white, except for any coming from our demon possessed sword. And I'm just going to paint a rough looking circle where the text is. To give the balloon a, a black outline, go back to the layers and I'll click on this little FX symbol and select stroke from the drop down menu. This will open another window where we can change and specify the look of the outline for our speech bubble. For mine, I like the line size to be set to four and the color is already set to black so I can close this window. Now let's add the little tail to the speech bubble to show where the speech is coming from. So I'll select the brush window and reduce the width of this brush so I can make it a finer line. But wait, before we do that, how about we bring the text back for this so we can get a better sense of the design. At the moment, the text layer is under our speech bubble so it's hidden. I can change this by clicking on the text layer in the layers window and just dragging it to the top of the list. This literally places it at the top layer of all the others I have in this list. Holding down the shift key and selecting both the text and speech bubble layers, I'm going to move them slightly. Their position feels just a little too close to the action here and doesn't feel quite right in terms of design. So once they're both highlighted, I'll use the move tool on the left here and just drag them to wherever I feel works best. Great. Now that I'm happy with this position, let's reselect layer two, our speech bubble, and then go back to the brush tool. And I'm just going to draw in the rough shape for the tail. And then with the eraser tool set to a smaller size, I'm going to erase areas of the speech bubble to shape it the way I want. Make sure when using the brush or the eraser tool that you have the brush setting on the hard round brush so you get the crisp edges. I find it gives mine an almost hand drawn look that fits with the style of the comic. But experiment to make it suit your own. Once I have the text and speech bubble in place and shaped, I can start to think about maybe changing the text to suit the scene. For instance, to create a bit more impact here, we can enlarge the text or maybe even make it bolder to emphasize the characters speaking louder with more authority.
For the second speech bubble that appears at the bottom here, we don't have to repeat all those steps. Instead, we can use the existing layers we have and duplicate them. So we'll start by selecting the text and right click on the layer to get this list of options and select duplicate layer. Press OK for this little window, no need to change any titles or details. And with the move tool, drag the layer to the position you want. For this one, I'm going to put it about here. Let's go to layer 2, which is our speech bubble, and we're going to do the same thing. Right click, duplicate layer, click OK, select the move tool and drag the layer down to the position of our text. Of course, at this stage, nothing about the text or speech bubble matches the dialogue in the script. So first I'm going to adjust the speech bubble using the brush and eraser to shape it to what I want. And let's make it a little more jagged because he's going to be screaming in this one. Then I'll find the text layer and I can tell the difference between the original and the duplicate because this one has the word copy at the end of it. And I'll select the type tool select the text and rewrite the text to suit the dialogue in my script. The whole process to add the speech bubbles is very quick. What is most important is working out where they will go and that you have a readable font. I've selected a font specifically designed for comics and that doesn't look too jarring and is definitely not Comic Sans. Sorry Comic Sans. For placement, I usually work this out in the sketching phase for each page. I have a rough idea of what the dialogue will be based on my script, so I can design the panel with the intention of keeping enough space for dialogue. Quite often that dialogue will be cut down to the bare minimum as I want the image to do most of the storytelling. I also find with a digital colour comic, the very stark white of the speech balloons looks a little jarring and draws too much attention away from the art. So for each speech bubble, I'll reduce the opacity by selecting the layer and using the opacity toggle at the top to bring it down to somewhere between 85 to 88%. This leaves enough white for the text to be visible, but blends the white of the speech bubble in with the surrounding colors and they don't look so harsh against the image. I hope you found this useful and perhaps this will speed up your speech bubble process for your own comics. If you would like to read what happens next to Jim Reel, check out the link below. And if you have any other questions about the creation process of my illustrations, please feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Let's talk soon.